One of the things that I hear over and over again from the teens that I work with in my mental health therapy practice is they just can't seem to get motivated to do their homework. They procrastinate, they can't get a clear head, they have trouble concentrating, and I know why. One of the main culprits of this is having a disorganized or cluttered workspace. And as you can see, mine's looking a little cluttered these days. So I was hoping that you would join me for a decline clutter your desk with me video today. Hi, I'm Mallory Grimsty. Welcome back to the channel. Um, I'm happy to be back. I've missed you guys. I've been working hard on some other things behind the scenes like the coping skills crash course. So definitely check that out if you want to boost in coping skills. But in this video today, we're going to be doing a declutter with me video. So before I even get started with my decluttering plan, I like to just take a moment and pause and reflect and get centered um, and make sure that I have time set aside for this. So I like to work in what are called Pomodoros, which is where you set a timer for 25 minutes on, five minute break. So I'm going to do that first. And then the next thing that I like to do is to literally take everything off of my desk space. I completely clear it and I start putting things in piles that are similar together. So like objects go with like objects. Also, really great to have some good decluttering fuel. It's my license. Okay, so one of the ways that I really like to work is I like to start from one corner and go to the next. So here I'm going from the left side of the desk and going towards the right side of the desk. I actually take everything out too as I sort and separate. As I went along, I started kind of grouping together items that were similar together, and I'll go through each of these sections in a moment. But first, I'm going to take a moment and clean this desk because you want a clean space for where you're gonna be working. One of the ways that I was taught to clean is to go from top to bottom because dust and dirt and grime is going to fall from the top and make its way down. So that's why I'm starting with the top. And again, um, I kind of, I try to go like left to right just for my own brain, but sometimes I mix it up a little bit. You know, do whatever is gonna work best for you, but that's how my brain works for cleaning. All right, y'all, I have no idea how this happens, but um, I think that most of y'all know that I have a dog. Her name is Princess, she's a cutie pie. She never comes into the office because this is not a pet friendly office. And yet I seem to accumulate her hair sometimes. So we're gonna go ahead and get this all off too. All right, this space is already looking and seeming a little bit more presentable and workable. I'm sure you've noticed that I've stuck only to the desk area. I'm not touching the bookshelf or any of this stuff next to me because I don't have a ton of time and I don't want that to jam me up or hold me up in getting the rest of my work done. Um, I do have client sessions, so I need to be mindful and considerate of that. So I think it's okay when you are doing this at home for your own needs as well to keep in mind that, okay, you're probably not going to be able to clean your entire space and declutter your entire space if you have pressing assignments. So it's okay to take it piece by piece. And in this video, I concentrating on my desk area. So that's where I would um, really recommend that you start with. Okay, so now that everything is nice and clean, I'm going to go ahead and start putting items back on my desk that I know need to live on my desk. Uh, part of this decluttering process that I'm going to go through is I'm really going to try to clear out the amount of stuff on my desk because one of the things that I'm noticing is I get very distracted or overwhelmed by how much visual clutter I'm taking in. So you'll notice that as I go through this next phase. One of the first things that lives on my desk is my laptop. Obviously need that. Um, I already have like my lamp and everything. So I don't know if you guys noticed, but I actually, I don't have my lamp facing out towards me or towards my work. I actually have it facing towards the back because when I do telehealth, I do it from right here. And so when I turn the light on, it reflects back pretty nicely. Maybe I'll show a video on how that looks. 
Any good therapist will know you need a good clock on your desk. Taking note of the time and the timing of the sessions helps make sure that the client has enough time to talk about whatever it is that's on their mind that they really wanna work through, but also being considerate that we can't get through everything in one session. And it would be horribly cruel and unkind to cut you off in the middle of some deep revelation or um, processing and be like, oh, we're out of time. So being considerate and mindful of the time in a way that is not intrusive to the therapy and leaving enough time for wrap up and reflection is a really important part of any therapy session. So this clock definitely needs to live on my desk. All right, I think we are ready to go section by section for the rest of the items. All right, so now it is time to go through the different sections of items that were all on my desk. It may look alike a lot, but it's actually not that much. So I tend to declutter and organize pretty often. So there's not gonna be too many different sections or items to go through. Yours may be more or less depending on what you have on your desk that you have to clear or your workspace. Just know that yours might look a little bit different. So these are my sections that I have sectioned out. I might have to like regroup a little bit as I go. So these are um, decor items. These are papers and mailing. Um, actually, this should go in sentimental. So put this over here. Sentimental are um, thank you cards or images or some sort of craft project that was created in session either by myself or with a client that they gave to leave in the office for others to enjoy. I've got, this is some more decor stuff. This is organization, decor. Oh, so these stones here are for whenever somebody in any of my teen group therapy groups uh, moves on from group. These are their stones. And actually this is from when I was going back and forth from the office. Um, so I can actually probably consolidate those. You know, more papers. Um, I have some tech stuff, cleaning. I have personal care items. Yes, I have a hairbrush and hair ties in here because sometimes I forget them. This is my birdie alarm. This thing is great, by the way. If you are worried about like, this is not an endorsement <laughs> by any means. This is not sponsored. But this thing is great if you're ever worried about like walking alone or anything. This is great. This actually belongs to my car. <laughs> so I'm gonna put that in my bag. Yes, I use a backpack, <laughs> just like you. Um, so sentimental items, writing and office supplies. Yeah, so I'm gonna start with the paper products and kind of move from there. You'll notice that as I go through each of these different sections, I'm gonna go through each item one at a time. And I'm going to notice first, does this item bring me joy? And does it need to live on my desk or can it live somewhere else off site, off my desk. Things that I don't need or that don't bring me joy or don't serve a purpose anymore, I'm going to go ahead and either donate or sell those. And things that I need to hold on to, like I am always writing on paper. I need tons of pads of paper. Do I need like all of these pads of paper to live on my desk? No, I just need one at a time. So the rest I'm probably gonna put either into my storage cabinet or into the storage closet in the waiting room. Okay, so I already know that a lot of these items I don't even use anymore like that. Like I have this three hole punch. I can't even tell you the last time that I used it. So I'm actually gonna be donating this. The stapler and the tape, I'm probably going to keep. I hardly ever use them, but you know, there's probably a time or a purpose, so I'll hold on to those. So honestly, I only use like one writing utensil at a time. So I'm gonna go through and just keep like one highlighter and just a few pens in my pen cup. That way I'm not distracted by so many different options. And like with the crayons, I actually haven't been using these as often. So I'm gonna put them in the supply closet. Anyone need a pen? <laughs> I'll clean that up after. So I have a few of these trinkets left over. I'm gonna put them over here for now because I might use them on my desk or I might get rid of them. All right, there's not too much left to do. Sentimental, you should always save for last. Says hold a lot of memories and sunshine. With technology, we do live in a technological world these days. So I, of course, 
I need my webcam for my uh, client session. So that definitely needs to live on the desk. This is another adapter for my computer. AirPods. Um, I think my AirPods broke recently. I need to investigate that. So it's gonna be like a maybe. It's a charger, I don't know what it's for. My dongle for my iPod. A little clicker. Then I've got a, a flash drive. So for the things that do need to live on my desk, these don't need to live on my desk. These can go in the drawer. I do use pretty often, so they're gonna live there. And the webcam. Wrap it up a little bit though, so it's nice and pretty. Look how nice it fits now. Everything fits in one little container. Okay, so decor. All right, decor and organization. So these are all organization things. This candle I love. This is definitely staying on the desk. So both of these, I need to dust them, so I'm gonna dust them after, but um, I really love this decor, so this will also stay on my desk. And then this bracelet, it's super cute. It says social work on it with a little heart. I know I like it, I think it goes with my coloring, so I'm gonna keep that. And if any of y'all know, yellow butterflies are incredibly important anchor symbols in my family and in my life, so I love having this to look at and remind myself of why I do this, my family connection, and all that good stuff. This brings me so much joy. I had this in my very first cubicle because I didn't have an office when I first started. I worked at a cubicle. It says live, which I think is so important in the kind of work that I do. This I actually have a few of, so I'm gonna put this away. And this, I like it, but I don't love it. Um, I think it was a gift. I don't totally remember what or where, so I'm gonna donate this. All right, we are getting there home stretch. Um, and these are crystals. I don't know if any of you guys are into them. They tend to represent different meanings or purposes. Um, I don't necessarily believe that this particular crystal is going to change my life or change the way I feel, but I do use them as anchors of belief. And so um, when I look at this particular crystal, this is uh, called selenite and it's supposed to be used for clearing or cleaning, charging the importance of these other stones. It just reminds me that I'm taking care of myself and it's a physical reminder of some of the work that I do as a therapist. That's why I keep some of these crystals. Now, not all of these I think need to live on my desk anymore. So I think many of them I'm actually gonna bring home. Sentimental items we tend to hold on to for a long time because they feel meaningful for us. We worry that if we let it go, we're letting go of the relationship or the experience. And that's not always necessarily true. So not all of the cards or artwork I can display in my office because of confidentiality. So if somebody has their name on something or something indicative of who they are, I actually can't display it. So I actually have a folder that I put a lot of this stuff in. Um, so if you've ever made me anything or for the office and you're not seeing it in this pile don't worry I haven't forgotten about you I have everything it's just tucked away safely where I can look at it privately so thank you very much for that I'm gonna be clearing out some of this because even though it means a lot to me uh, when I'm working especially now doing so much telehealth it's really important that I'm staying focused on the client experience and what I'm finding is I often am getting distracted by the visual representation of these other client relationships and experiences so I'm gonna be putting many of this stuff away off of the desk not because I don't want to think about you, but because the way my work has changed before, I used to work on the couches. And so when I was at my desk, I was doing like administrative work. Now I do most of my work at my desk. I do some on the couches, but most of it's on my desk now. So I've had to reorganize and re-strategize a little bit. All right, so the items that I'm gonna be keeping on my desk are now on the desk. I have some of these organizational tools that I'm gonna leave here and I'm gonna go around on my desk. Um, things aren't put in order yet, but I'm gonna go through and reorganize it so you can join me over there right now. Actually, as I started that video, my timer went off. So it's time for a Pomodoro break. So I'm just gonna take a few minutes and take a break. All right, so now that I have the items that I want to live on my desk over here, I'm actually looking and reconsidering some of the items. I think I'm actually going to put some of this decor in different areas in my office. I don't think they need to actually live on my desk, but the rest of the stuff, I'm gonna take some time and kind of try out a different few areas until I find a, a look that I like. 
as you can see, my desk is a lot more clear and not as cluttered with some visual clutter. I ended up keeping a lot of things but finding new homes for them that's not in my workspace. That way when I am working with my clients, I'm not like fumbling through a bunch of pens. I'm not um, trying to figure out which pad of paper I wrote on. There's only one item of each or a limited supply items. So that will make it a lot easier for me to concentrate on the work that I have to do in this space. And I'm hoping that that will be the same for you at home as well. I really hope that you enjoyed decluttering your desk with me. Uh, let me know how long did it take you in the comments below. It took me about two Pomodoros, so a little less than an hour in total, though I did have to keep stopping to talk to you and to also change up like the camera and the lighting depending on where I was. I anticipate that it'll probably take you less time unless you have a lot of clutter or a lot of cleaning to do, then it might take you some more time. Take your time with this you are awesome. Taking the time to declutter your desk will definitely help set you up for more success in doing your homework because your space will already be ready for you. If you enjoy this type of video and you'd like to practice some more mindfulness skills with me, check out this playlist right over here. I have a whole series on that. Thanks for watching!